What is going on, SMT Nation? It is your boy, the SMT. This story uh, that we're going to cover here in this video, uh, this pretty much stems back to the origin of the shutdown of the T-Mobile network segment from the Sprint merger, the CDMA network shutdown that was going to impact uh, Dish Wireless operations with Boost Mobile customers. This problem has been dragging on and on, and it's you know it's kind of coming to a T here. So I want to cover the details, and it looks like this is going to be heading to court. There is a summons uh, that is ongoing now officially from the California Public Utilities Commission. So they're they're coming in with their form of litigation here, implicating some T-Mobile issues in the merger as it affects Dish, Boost Mobile, and the CDMA 3G network shutdown. The issue here is that T-Mobile wants to expeditiously shut down the Sprint 3G CDMA network. Many Boost uh, Mobile customers are still on that access and they rely on it for primary connection. Boost Mobile customers obviously need time to adopt LTE and 5G handsets. T-Mobile claims that they have provided enough time, and Dish argues anti-competitive behaviors and not enough time to do so. So the California Public Utilities Commission involved here made deals with T-Mobile to approve the merger. T-Mobile agreed to you know different types of stipul stipulations like creating jobs and broadband speed builds and such. Uh, T-Mobile reneged on those jobs right away, writing a letter right after the agreement that they didn't have the right to tell them to do that. Anyways, things have been contentious uh, for a while. So the CPUC now forcing the issue here, believing that T-Mobile needs to prove that they should not be sanctioned by the CPUC for violating merger agreement terms in regards to Boost Mobile and network migrations. The first issue they are saying is false, misleading, and omitted statements by T-Mobile. The details here is that T-Mobile under oath would allow Boost Mobile customers to continue to use CDMA networking until they were fully migrated to the DISH network, which would be LTE and 5G combined. The second item is T-Mobile would maintain the CDMA network during the migration process, not allowing the experience to degrade. All right, so looking at some of these notes and looking at some of these items, you could see what exactly is the issue at hand. Additionally, DISH has up to three years to complete the Boost Mobile customer migration if they need that much time. Also, T-Mobile did not disclose the PCS spectrum being used in the CDMA network would be needed for their 5G network build during this time period. So the CPUC is taking issue with the retiring of the Sprint Legacy Network as well, the LTE side, as the language in the agreement terms states, reserving the right to present this also. So that is a second element to this. Neville Ray, under oath, accepted the following terms in the merger. We will maintain CDMA for Boost customers during the migration period. Secondly, it would not impact their 5G build during the process. T-Mobile would also lease the 800 megahertz of band 26 for this purpose during those two years. Neville testified on several spectrum types needed for their 5G build. PCS was never mentioned. He never mentioned PCS would be needed. He did not even mention that PCS was in use in the CDMA network. Neville Ray appears guilty of neglect, omission, and a lack of attention to detail. In April of 2021, T-Mobile notified DISH of the initial uh, or their intention to shut down the CDMA network, the reason being they needed PCS spectrum assets used in the CDMA network for their 5G network build, and it would, quote, impact the refarm process, unquote, according to Neville Ray. The testimony here is that the PCS on CDMA would not impact T-Mobile's 5G network build. Also, services would not degrade for DISH, Boost Mobile, and Sprint customers. T-Mobile agreed to fully support all existing DISH customers on Boost Mobile as well as the Sprint customers as they migrated during the entire process. T-Mobile has been ordered to appear to a hearing on these matters, and each guilty offense holds an up to $100,000 fine. The court date is set for September uh, 20th, 2021. Uh, it will be available on web in San Francisco, California is where it was be, would be held. So here's what I got for you guys. It's a bad week for T-Mobile. Uh, they had the customer data breach over the weekend uh, that was released in some news articles. That's bad, obviously. Uh, they'll also, you know, going to be dealing with this. So <laughs> the new T-Mobile is trying to be cutthroat and trying to show themselves as some kind of like killer. I think it's more of a reflection of the new CEO, Mike Sievert, trying to be a wolf in sheep's clothing. This has completely backfired. I have said it from the beginning. Uh, neglect and lack of attention to detail 
in those PCS terms in the CDMA network. Uh, the CPUC is pretty powerful in this. They have been from the beginning. They made agreements. T-Mobile may be guilty of violations here that are definitely going to come back and hurt them. And I think this is getting pretty bad on the T-Mobile side. Bad optics. It appears to be that they owe uh, these dedications to these terms. And uh, it just looks bad for them. And they probably need to just change and reroute what they're doing here. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say on this. Um, I'm not really, I don't really see this as a way to defend T-Mobile. I don't see how you're doing that under the terms described here from the CPUC as well as the DOJ facilitating the fourth national carrier. I don't see how any of this looks good for T-Mobile. What say you chime off uh, or go ahead and let me know, chime in, uh, drop me a line in the comment section. Let me know what you think, how this is going to play out. What do you think the situation is? Love to hear what you have to say. The voice of the people you all are, uh, you know, welcome to your opinion. I'd love to, to see and, and read what you guys have to say on this. Uh, if you appreciated this video and enjoyed it, you let me know by liking the video, sharing it to your socials, and go ahead and subscribe if it's your first time here. Turn on the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. Thanks for being here to watch. Appreciate it, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace. Thank you for taking this opportunity to watch the SMT YouTube channel. If you appreciated this video, give it a like and a share to all your favorite social media platforms. Thank you in advance for that. Also, check out some of the links in the description box. We have the SMT Patreon page. We also have the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech. And do check out the audio-only podcast available on all the major podcast platforms. And if you are new have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and activate the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace.